It was an all too familiar experience for K-State again on Saturday night at Fifth Third Bank Arena. The Wildcats had flashes at points in the game where, all right, this team doing some good things, but a lot that put them behind the eight ball. But when it came down to the end of the game, they made it close. They even had a lead at one point. And similar to the TCU game, a three in the waning moments took away their chances of a victory. And one of the major culprits of the loss was turnovers and lack of production from your other stars. I'm Mason Voth. That's Drew Galloway. Welcome into K-State Online. K-State falls by the final score of 74-72 to tonight to the Cincinnati Bearcats. A tough blow for K-State's NCAA tournament resume that got the bump because earlier in the day Villanova won at Providence. That's probably going to become a quad one victory for K-State. But they had a chance for another one tonight and to get their third true road victory of the season. They weren't able to do it despite the fact that Tyler Perry was a star, and that is the first place we should start. Get that out of the way here because he played a phenomenal game. You could tell he wanted it, and he put up with a lot of crap this season. He still puts up with a lot of crap. And what was proven tonight was that Tyler Perry has never been as bad as what people thought. What people thought Tyler Perry was – is kind of what some of the other guys on this team have turned into. Yeah, it was a big game for Tyler Perry. A season high, I believe, 26 points and 6 of 8 from 3. He was everything that you could have asked for tonight. But the, the issue was that nobody else gave him help besides Jarrell Colbert. Jarrell Colbert, Jarrell Colbert with a career-high 15 points and 7 rebounds tonight. He was great, too. It, it's just the constant frustration of what I said uh, during the game a few times is that this felt like a rerun of the Oklahoma State game where K-State struggles offensively in the first half, gets behind, figures it out offensively in the second half, but just was very poor, to put it lightly, defensively. Uh, Cincinnati ended up scoring on 66% of their possessions in the second half. That, that, that's okay. not a recipe for success, but it, it feels like you missed a big opportunity. You also missed a big opportunity because th this is the this is the best version of Tyler Perry. They, we're on a stretch run where I, I called it uh, in, up in the press box that it, it was an over my dead body for game for Tyler Perry because he was the only one that was playing well and constantly looked like he wanted to win outside of Jarrell Colbert. Yeah, and that's that's a great point. I mean, Tyler Perry wanted it tonight. He was good from the start, good through the middle, good at the end. The only issue, and I told you this before it got into this point, I think I said it even when K-State took the lead on – an, an incredible Tyler Perry three, I said, I have a feeling that this game is going to come into a spot where K-State needs to do something late, and it's on Tyler Perry, and he's either not going to get it done or make a mistake, and then he's going to get a hefty amount of the blame. Really, though, I think a lot of people are going to understand what Tyler Perry did tonight as a good thing. What a lot of people are also going to understand is that Cam Carter and Arthur Kaluma did not step up when K-State needed it. Cam Carter has struggled over the last couple of weeks now, and tonight, turnovers have been a problem at times this year. They were amplified. He turns the ball over six times, second six turnover game for Cam Carter this season. He also did it against Wichita State. And not to add insult to injury, to injury there was at one point where we looked at the box score. They gave a turnover that probably should have been Cam Carter's to Will McNair, who I'm not even sure was involved on the play. So it could have been seven, and in total – Kaluma and Carter combined for six turnover or combined for 12 turnovers in the game, and neither of them shot it very well. We talk about Perry. He was 70% from the floor tonight. Everybody else for K-State, Jarrell Colbert was 63, but the other guys that attempted more than two shots, Cam Carter, 36%, Will McNair, 33%, David Gasson, 25%, and Arthur Kaluma, 18%. He was also three of six at the free throw line in a night where mostly everybody else stepped up at the stripe for K-State, that's another area where Kaluma let K-State down. And I think you could make the case that this is his worst game as a Wildcat considering all the areas that if he just trims up one thing here or there gives K-State the win and the magnitude of this game. I think that there's a legitimate argument that it's probably both Carter and Kaluma's worst games as a Wildcat this season. Those two combined to have double the amount of turnovers to made shots. I mean, that, that's not going to get the job done on any night in this league. And it, it just magnified in a game like this where you needed somebody else, just one of them. I posted even in the game thread in the, in, at halftime, I said that K-State's played really bad the first half because they did. Mm -hmm. But if just one of Kaluma or Carter stepped it up in the second half, I thought K-State was going to win. And, and neither one of them did. 
there, there were moments for both of them, but at the same time, there were also still those very frustrating moments. Uh, Cam Carter had one down here on this basket on a fast break when K-State cut the lead to three and just had a terrible turnover with three minutes left that ends up leading to a dunk. And at a point where K-State was really clawing back into the game and where the crowd was starting to, like, you felt it. Kind of how the K-State West Virginia game was where the crowd got kind of tight and the players were getting tight for Cincinnati. But Carter has a bad turnover, leads to a dunk, and Wes Miller smartly calls a timeout yep. to get the crowd back into it. So it, it was just an all-around really bad performance for Carter and Kluma. I, I mean, th there were times, too, where K-State was on the defensive end, and, and I, I'll just I'll call him out. Kluma didn't look very engaged defensively for a lot of the night tonight. Well, and defense is a big problem. The final turnover numbers, K-State turns it over 19 times, only six for Cincinnati, and that's why you look at the, the shooting numbers. K-State shot 25 free throws. That ends up being 17 more than Cincinnati, who was only four of eight at the line. So K-State was better there. K-State, even though it felt like Cincinnati was pouring in shots they normally don't hit, that is true. K-State was better from three than the Bearcats. But what Cincinnati did better than K-State was they got off 16 more shots in the game, and that comes down to the fact that K-State gave them so many free possessions, and Cincinnati took advantage of them by scoring because K-State's defense was lacking tonight. And one of the things that I think – can illustrate that best is you look in the final box score, K-State, their largest scoring run, they went on a 10-0 run. Cincinnati's best run in this game, a game that they led by, I think, 14 at one point, or 13 was their biggest lead at one point in the second half. Their largest run was only 6-0. What that entails is K-State struggled to score early in the game, but K-State was giving up bucket, 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 maybe getting a stop, but then bucket, bucket, bucket you weren't able to add enough stops into a series of plays and possessions, and that's a killer for K-State, and they tried everything. Man, zone, n nothing worked tonight. They had a lot of lost bodies out there, and it's just it's unfortunate for them the way things played out because, again, I, I don't think that this team shows up and doesn't want to compete, and I don't think that they lack effort most of the time. I just truly think they aren't smart enough and they're not good enough to come through in these situations time and time again. And ultimately, when you have a team like that, you get a bubble team. That's what happens with bubble teams. They can play really good. They can play really bad. And I think the issue for K-State is, is that you can see the talent and the ability to be a good team and to play really good. It just It's not happening enough for them, and there are some limitations that hold them back from being a good team. And that's, that's where they are, life on the bubble, and they'll have two opportunities coming up again with Kansas and Iowa State in the final week of the regular season, and we'll kind of see how it goes from there because your tourney hopes are resting on that, and we'll see what happens in Lawrence. KU now back-to-back -back losses. Uh, this one this weekend in, in Waco, they lost their last game in Allen. If they were to lose to K-State, it's likely that they finish 9-9 nine and nine in Big 12 play because they finish at Houston. So they are going to be highly motivated, their senior day, all of that. And then you get Iowa State, who has been neck and neck with Houston all season, playing like one of the best teams in the country because they can score on you, anybody can do it, and their defense is pretty top-notch. So we'll see what comes about this coming week. K-State's got to turn around, flush it quick. Jerome Tang said Tuesday night is the biggest game of the season. We'll see if anybody wants to join Tyler Perry in trying to help the Cats out. Yeah, it just this feels honestly probably like the worst loss of the season on, based, based on timing and how it all played out. TCU is probably up there. But th this is why when K-State lost to TCU, Nebraska, and Oklahoma at home, we were so – angry with the performance because if you win one of those games and defend your home floor you could lose a game like this and it's not as big of a deal but you no showed in two games at home and then lost in a heartbreaker uh to tcu that this is the kind of game that you really needed and it doesn't go your way and i i've pointed this out a few times to other people that this k-8 team is frustrating to everybody because outside of two games really they they haven't gotten blown out by anybody. The Iowa State game, they were right in at the end. They lost in the last seconds to TCU and Cincinnati. Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Houston. Are yeah. Three games that you're like, you just had no chance. But but the other but all the other games, it, it's came down to the last few minutes where K State has kind of fallen apart or the game just hasn't gone their way. So that that that's my biggest takeaway of this season, honestly, is that this is this is a flawed team. 
but they aren't like terrible. They are just like the perfect bubble team because they, they keep going down to the wire. And a way to make up for all this, I contend, when you're deficient in certain areas like shooting, K-State doesn't have a ton of shooters. They don't have a ton of depth. They don't have a lot of other things that go into this. The one way you can make up for that is by playing smarter basketball. And I just don't think this team has gotten better at it. And obviously, at this point in the season, they're not capable of that. And so they're going to have to hope that other guys score up and let their talent rise above in the next two games and we'll see what it looks like the next two and then whatever you get in Kansas City there is some good news in terms of how things played out I mentioned Villanova earlier today they'll probably move to a quad one win for K-State in addition to that uh, UCF they lost at home to Iowa State so it's getting closer that K-State will avoid having to play on loser day Tuesday of the Big 12 tournament means they'll get a quad one opponent on Wednesday of the Big 12 tournament get a quad one win chance and then you'll see what happens on Thursday in the quarterfinal where you would get another massive opportunity against one of the top four teams but that's a pipe dream. Got to focus on Kansas and Iowa State, and we'll see what comes this week. That will do it for Drew and I from Fifth Third Bank Arena here in Cincinnati. We will be back tomorrow morning. We will have the Sunday show with you. KSU underscore fan will join us. Tony and, Kornheiser. Yeah, Tony Kornheiser, according to some. And uh, we are going to get out of here and avoid the skyline chili like the plague. I don't know why anybody likes that. I was trying to decide when I did the food review, man, maybe it's getting better as I eat it. Maybe it's it getting worse. It didn't. It got way worse. And by the end of it, I was like, I don't ever want to think about this again. I It, may, it, is, it is vomit-inducing to think about it now. It's so bad, uh, just equally as bad as Cam Carter and Arthur Kaluma's game. But shout out to Tyler Perry trying to carry the load. It's going to take somebody stepping up, probably multiple guys stepping up to get the job done in Allen on Tuesday. So we're out of here. Thanks for watching K-State Online.